Hi, good morning. Everybody hear me okay? Awesome. Uh, my name is Sergeant Chris Bishop with the Utah Patrol. Uh, I have you for the next six hours, so buckle up. I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, we'll be here for the next 45-ish minutes, but uh, I'm really uh, happy to be able to come down uh, and present to you. I know a lot of the things I'm going to be sharing with you today are things that you already know. Um, it's just trying to get that information out to you, uh, why it's important, um, why we have the, the graduated driver's license program and and what it does for for your students so uh, I, like i said i know it's going to be a lot of stuff that you already know but uh, hopefully you might take away something that you can take back to your classrooms and, and help your students um, drive safely because that's really what the, the ultimate goal is um, that everybody drives safe and is uh, in a good position to, to get home safely every single night so let's jump into it so and I'd love this to be interactive because I hate standing up here talking to two guys and I'm sure just as you are in the classroom you'd love student participation. Uh, if there's things that you yeah want to throw out there that maybe I missed please yeah let's let's have this be more of an interactive conversation than just me standing up here boring you guys with PowerPoints. So what is the GDL system so back in the mid 90s. Um, NHTSA, US DOT, and all sorts of other smart people came together and said, hey, we need to do something because we're losing a lot of teens' lives. So they came up with a graduated driver's license program. And so what it does, it brings um, basically three, three components. The uh, permitting process that um, here in Utah, you have to be at least 15 to, to get your permit. Um, I think Idaho allows you to get it at 14, but farmers, so. We'll, we'll just leave it leave it there but uh has the permit stage followed by the intermediate stage which is the uh the actual driver's license and then finally you get a full privileged driver's license all 50 states have some form of this uh, gdl um and it, so it's not something that is necessarily state specific but the regulations and the guidelines that go with it are are state specific but all of them fall uh within those those categories that the the USDOT has has put out. Uh, Utah's GDL uh, laws are primarily for 15 to 17 year olds, and we're going to go through those here in just a, a second. Um, but they require certain steps prior to gaining uh, your driver's license. And Utah formed their GDL in 1999. So I'm having some problems with the PowerPoint, so we're going to have to. So I, I show this video in one of my other presentations that I do, and I'm like, this is pretty awesome. My oldest is 10. Um, he'll be 11 in June, and he a few months ago, he's like, Dad, how come fifth graders can't drive? I said, probably because you can't see over the steering wheel, and you're just in the fifth grade. Um, but uh, and he wants to be, you know, 20 years old already. Um, but uh, I saw this video, and I'm like. This is pretty pretty awesome. I hope I'm not going to be like one of these parents. So, like I said, my my oldest is is ten. I uh, I can wait. I absolutely can wait to to be in the the passenger seat with him. Um, prior to coming up to, or going to our headquarters, doing what I do now, I was a field training officer for 
like four years. So I sat in the passenger seat with brand new troopers. Um, that's exciting. If you, you want to live on the edge, get in a, a high speed pursuit sitting in the passenger seat. It's a, uh, it's very helpless feeling. Um, but I'm sure that's the, the same thing as you guys go out there uh, doing the range and and other driving training, getting in that passenger seat. But I didn't have a, a brake pedal on my side, so it's it's fun. But uh, we we need to remember that these are are just kids. And when I uh, when I talk um, to drivers ed classes, I talk a little bit about physiology and we talk about the human brain. Um, that you know these kids they still have developing brains, and we talk about decision making. That you know they're going to make poor decisions. It's our uh, job as as instructors to help mitigate those those poor decisions to help them show them enough good things that they can do give them enough uh, good reasons to to do what they're going to do so they don't have to fall back on what their their brain thinks they sh they should do because we know that they're going to make poor decisions and I tell them you know when you get in a car and someone says hey buckle up or hey watch this you probably just want to get out of the car because it's not going to be a, a good thing but this is, uh, these are the Utah GDL requirements. So you have to wait until you're 15 to, to get your, um, your permit. You have to have it for six months. Uh, you have to have an adult um, sign off that they're gonna basically be responsible. That's, that's a huge responsibility. Um, but uh, the parents are, are signing that they're basically taking responsible for their, their kids' actions. Um, they have to have 40 hours and 10 after dark. Again, these are things that, that you all know that I know are, are discussed heavily in, in your classes, but it's something that these, these kids really need to, to understand. The more practice they, they have before they go to the, the DM or the driver's license division to get their driver's license, the better they're going to be. My, uh, my niece in California, she, uh, she's almost 16 and she's trying to get her permit, but she failed her, the written part. Um, the first time and I'm like, that's okay. Just take it again, get more knowledge. Um, and that's really what it's about, getting as much knowledge into these, these kids' heads as possible so they can know the laws, know what they're supposed to do when they come upon a, a certain situation. Um, so when they do turn 16, they are eligible for their license. There are a few other requirements. So these, these are really, really important um, that, uh, they can't have a family or the only people they can have in the car are immediate family members. I'll get, what about cousins? What about, you know, this and that? The law states immediate family members. So that's what we're, we're going to have to go with. Um, you know, there's always going to be those, those exceptions, but we, we have to go with, with what the law says uh, that it's immediate family until six months after receiving the license, uh, no nighttime driving from 12 to 5 AM. Again, those are, there are exceptions uh, to, to those if they're working or, or something like that. But sorry, went a little too fast. What I find interesting is when you turn 18, um, you don't have to have any driver's education. Um, if uh, you can absolutely do it, but you're not required to, to have any uh, formal driver's education after 18. So self and use is prohibited for any driver under 18. Um, unless it's an emergency situation. The Utah not a drop law states that absolutely no alcohol in the, the driver's system or in the vehicle at all. Um, for us as law enforcement officers, all we have to be able to do is, is detect it. If I can smell it on them, that's, that's enough to, to get them into some trouble. So currently, um, there are no regulations, sorry, there are no, uh, no laws or no penalties associated with the GDL laws. If these kids are driving after dark, driving with the car full of their friends, we can stop them. Yes. So if I am a senior in high school, yes. and I'm turning 18 on May 18th, I would not have a senior education. You absolutely can, but... Um, I don't have to actually get a first practice education. Correct. You still have to have it for... Sorry, you're correct, 19. Um, you still have to have it for six months, your permit for six months. You can't just go get a permit and then the next day. You're, you're I, I, it is 19. Yeah. Um, yeah, sorry. It's down at the very bottom that 
you and the firm probably can't see but yeah I, I misspoke it's 19 you can skip the driver's education part all right where are we at um so uh, going back to cell phones the only exceptions to using cell phones are for emergency calls a lot of people will be like well i had to call my mom because it was an emergency no that's not an emergency that you forgot your lunch um, an emergency is you come upon a crash or someone in the back seats having some sort of medical emergency that's an emergency uh, not that you know it was really really important that you you call mom and, and tell her what's going on um I'll share a, a story um probably five or six years ago i was working um i spent most of my career working in, in utah county and so it was Friday night, a little after midnight. Um, I was sitting on the side of the road waiting for, for somebody to, to drive by me so I could go talk to them. And uh, so this car goes by me at 107 miles an hour. Figured that's who I want to go talk to. So I pull behind the car, turn my lights on, pull it over, and uh, walk up to young man, 16 or 17 years old. I said, good evening, Trooper Bishop of the High Patrol. I'm stopping you tonight because you're going a little fast. You're at 107 miles an hour. The speed limit is 70 uh, in this area. And uh, he said, yeah, I know I was going kind of fast, but anybody have any idea what his excuse was? Friday night after midnight, he was late for curfew. I said, I get it. I was, I was a kid once, been late a time or two. Uh, do you have a cell phone? He said, I do. I said, will you do me a favor? Will you call your mom? Just let her know that you got pulled over. Um, and you're going to be a little bit later. I don't want you getting in any more trouble. <laughs> and uh, he said, okay, I said, while you're on the phone, though, I need to do a few other things. I need to let your mom know that you got pulled over for 107 miles an hour. You're going to get a ticket that's going to cost you $530. Um, you're going to have to go see a judge and your license is going to be suspended for probably at least a month. And, and his jaw hit the, the steering wheel as I'm explaining to this this to him and he's like what i'm like that's what happens at 31 miles an hour over the speed limit it's 470 it's a now 480 dollars fine um plus ten dollars for every mile an hour over 31. uh you just accrued enough points on your provisional provisional driver's license that it's going to get you a, a one month suspension and at 31 plus you're required to go see a judge you know sorry to be the bearer of bad news but when it comes down to it i want you to get home safe did I save his life that night? I don't know. I hope I did. I hope he, was, he made it home. But uh, he was forming habits um, that, hey, I got away with it that time. I can maybe stay out a little bit longer, speed and get home the next time. It's going to catch up to him. Um, the stats that we're seeing right now are just absolutely uh, insane with the, the number of, of people we're stopping over 100 miles an hour. Um, and uh, it's yeah, it's pretty, pretty crazy. And we'll, we'll talk about that a, a little bit later in the, the presentation. So um, started to talk about this. Right now, if I do um, stop a, a young man or young woman for a violation of any of the GDL laws, I can absolutely give them a ticket, but there's no penalty associated with that, with that ticket. Uh, next month, I'll be presenting at the Public Safety Summit, and we're going to be talking about, about that, why we still need to, to enforce those laws, even though there may not be be any penalties associated with it. And so we're working uh, with the Teen Driver Task Force to try to find out if this is something we wanna pursue, if we wanna look at penalties or look at adding points to, uh, to these penalties. Because um, right now the only GDL violation would be the not a drop um, because that's more of an alcohol related offense and not necessarily a, a driving offense. But, uh, and I, I'll even bring that up when I, I teach driver's ed classes that you, we have these laws, but I can't do anything if you, uh, if you do break that law. Yes, sir. No, they, I, there's absolutely a violation. And so I pulled our stats for the highway patrol for the last five or six years, and we're stopping about 500 drivers a year and giving them tickets. It's when they go to pay the ticket, there's no fine associated. There's no points because it's not a moving violation. So the driver's license division can't attach points to that to say, hey, you know, you're getting close to your points to, to get a suspension. So that's something we're, we're working on. Uh, we're gonna have to change some legislation to, to do that or create a, a rule for the DLD. Um, in my perspective as a law enforcement officer, I think that's absolutely necessary. Um, and I, I hate punishing people, but 
that's how we learn sometimes is by having a consequence. My kids hate consequences, but that's, that's how it works. Um, that's how we, we learn in life are through negative consequences sometimes. So, so why do we have laws? It's really about accountability. Um, keeping these kids accountable, saying, hey, you can't do this. And really the reason is we want you to learn how to be a driver before we send you out with your friends. Uh, I talk a lot about distractions in my driver's ed presentations. And you know, what are some of the distractions? Oh, phones, radio, whatever. And I get a lot of friends, absolutely friends are a distraction. That's why we have these GDL laws. We don't want you driving with your friends for the first six months so you can figure out how to be a, a driver first before we, we add in, uh, in those distractions. But really it's also about parental involvement um, and the, how important parents are to, to these young kids' lives. Uh, back in November, um, we had a, a pretty rough stretch where we had a, a number of teens uh, killed in incidents all throughout the state. And uh, I was at our headquarters sitting in, uh, in my office and uh, Colonel Rapich comes in and he said, Chris, we are killing a whole bunch of teens. I'm like, I, I know, it's, it's been really rough. He's like, we need to do something. I'm like, we, we do, Colonel. So he walked out, he comes back in a few minutes later, we need to do something today. I'm like, okay. So uh, I got on the phone with my friends at the highway safety office and said, hey, I need some stats right now. Um, luckily, Barbara and Brianna, they were super helpful and they were able to get me some stats. I talked to our partners at Zero Fatalities and said, hey, uh, I need to come up with a game plan today. So she sent me to uh, the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, the CHOP website. Is that is incredible. Zero fatalities links to, to their information a lot. Um, if you need information, I highly recommend going to the CHOP website. Uh, it's it is great. Um, and so I'm looking through all this stuff, and I came across some information that talked about how important parents are. I'm like, there's the answer. So the Colonel came back uh, that afternoon. He said, "Okay, what do you got, Chris?" I said, "We need to we need to hit the parents um, because that's that's where the important stuff happens." is getting parents involved in, in these teens' lives. Uh, we're gonna save the teens' lives. He said, okay, so we, we got everything ready uh, to put out on our social media and to our media partners. And he came back and he's like, let's just hold off. Let's, uh, let's not beat up the parents too, too hard today. Um, but uh, that's, that's the answer. Um, because these laws, we need accountability. We need parents' parental involvement because they, they save lives. Um, Sorry, that's a really long paragraph and I'm not gonna read it, but basically it says, these laws absolutely save lives. They reduce crashes um, because this was done by the Insurance Institute also uh, reduces losses for them. But uh, when it comes down to it, GDL laws save lives because it puts accountability on these teens. Question. Um, so it all begins with um, fuel injection, which is when the fuel is injected into the engine, which then powers up. Any other questions? Whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> so what, parents? We may think you're helping us when it comes to questions about driving. when it comes to graduated driver license laws. Graduated driver license laws, or GDL laws, are designed to protect your teens in the community. They allow your team to learn to drive in safe conditions, they safeguard your teens in situations when they increase crash risk, and they help your teens gradually increase their independence while learning safe driving habits. The bottom line is that GDL laws save lives. Since 1999, when the GDL program started, Utah parents have seen a decrease of approximately 70% in the number of teens killed in car crashes. Teens who say their parents monitor their driving in a helpful, supportive way are traffic warnings to speed, 70% more likely to break the drive, two times more likely to wear seatbelts, and 30% more likely to not have a cell phone when driving. Before your teen gets a driver's license, they have to have a learner permit for at least six months. 
So again, I'm sure you've all seen that, that video, but it's, again, it's important to get this information in front of parents. Um, hopefully they're, they're all attending the, the parent nights that Zero Fatalities puts on because they are absolutely key uh, to their, their kids' success. Um, you as instructors have an integral role in that as well, getting that information in front of them, but really it's, it's getting the, the parents involved and, and helping their kids get home safe every single day. So um, that can be hard at the same time. Um, we all have, have busy lives. Um, I think even more so, we've got so many, so many different things going on with work, school, other things in the community, all sorts of different activities that these kids are involved in. It's really hard to, to have that, that parental buy-in sometimes, but it's, it's important that, uh, that we have this, that partnership with with parents because really that's what it comes down to. It's that 70% um, that we're saving 70% more lives today than we were uh, back 20 years ago because of these laws. But we're, we're starting to slip a little bit and we need to get that parental involvement back in order to save these kids' lives. Um, and we need to, to really, we wanna start them off on, on the right foot by, by getting them uh, in, uh, in the driver's seat with, uh, with you as instructors and parents as well. Um, so they're they're prepared when they they go and get their driver's license. So um, I was also asked to discuss uh, teen crashes and, and teen citations and what uh, what we're seeing. Um, speeding is probably the the biggest thing that that we see um, as far as I'd say teens and any driver. Uh, we are are stopping a ridiculous amount of of speeders, but uh, speeding is also the, the leading cause of, of crashes that we have when teens are involved. Um, and a lot of that is, is due to lack of experience. You know, they get behind this, you know, car that has a whole lot of power that they aren't used to, or they're just there to, to have fun with their friends and they're, they're making poor decisions and it's causing crashes. Uh, failing to stay in their proper lane. Again, that's lack of experience. They're unfamiliar with how you know their their car moves or, or whatever um or they're they're driving distracted and that's really what we're seeing with with staying failing to stay in the proper lane disregarding traffic signs or signals uh in other words running stop lines or stop signs or stop lights um again that's a lack of of paying attention if we're looking uh, down the road at what's going on we're going to see those red lights we're going to see those stop signs uh, overcorrecting again that's going to be a lack of lack of experience that uh, that we're dealing with and then failing to to yield again that's why we we have the drivers uh, the driver's ed program that's why why we have range that's why we have uh, private uh, driver's education get these kids behind the wheel get them with a um, an experienced instructor that's going to help them with these things and then uh, just driving distracted uh, just a couple weeks ago, we did a, a dry, or distracted driving blitz in Utah and Salt Lake counties where uh, I think in one day in Utah County, we had over 200 vehicles stopped uh, for distracted driving. Uh, just absolutely uh, insane, the, the amount of people we still see uh, texting, 
doing all sorts of things. We had a guy uh, about a year ago, self-driving his Tesla, reading a newspaper. So we pulled him over like, what are you doing? He's like, well, my car drives itself. Well, I also saw last week that a self-driving Tesla hit an airplane. Um, the, these self-driving cars are, they're great. I'm sure that's how we're, or the technology we're all moving to, but we still have to maintain control. So lots of distractions out there, but we still have to, to maintain control of our, our vehicle. So a lot of people are, will ask, well, how much is this take gonna cost me? Well, here, here we go. Most traffic fines are between 100 and $160. Uh, seat belts right now are $45. That's something I'd love to see tripled or even quadrupled um, because I think a lot of people see, oh, $45, eh, okay, I can pay that. Uh, no, no big deal. If I, you know, it's worth it to not wear my seatbelt. Um, but what is, the hard part is when I have to go to their families and say, um, you know, your, your husband, your, your dad, uh, your, your wife, your, your mom, your daughter, they're, uh, they're unfortunately killed in a crash today. Um, they weren't wearing a seatbelt. There's no easy way to do that, um, to tell them that their loved one was killed. It's not like ripping a Band-Aid off, do it fast, do it slow. It doesn't matter. It's, it's terrible to have to, to do that. Uh, right now, texting is a $100 fine for the first offense. And finally, I uh, got smart and it's up to $690 for a, a second offense, or it's $690 if uh, injury is involved, if you're in a crash as well. Um, so I, I'd love to see these big fines because hopefully it tells people that, hey, I don't really want to pay that fine, so I'm going to obey the law. Speeding is a, a whole different animal. Um, there's a graduated scale for that. So it starts off at $130 for one to 10 miles an hour. Um, 15, 11 to 15 is 160, 16 to 20, $210, 21 to 25, 280, 26 to 30, 380. And now we're, we're getting to some of these new laws that are going into effect next month. So 31 plus, I kind of, I described what happens uh, with 31 plus earlier, um, that it's a base of $480 and then $10 for every mile an hour over 31. But, and I'm not sure how this is going to work. Um, starting May 4th, uh, Senate Bill 53 goes into effect, which at 100 miles an hour or more, it's going to be 150% of the minimum fine. Um, so 480 times 150% is going to be the, the baseline for, um, for 100 miles an hour. But at 105 miles an hour, it's an automatic reckless driving ticket, which is $690. I think they're, they're still going to have to figure out how that works. If you're getting a speeding ticket on top of the, the reckless driving, um, which I'm all in favor of. But, uh, but yeah, as of May 4th, uh, those two, uh, two penalties will be, be in effect. So nobody, nobody likes getting pulled over. Um, I don't even care to, to get pulled over, but uh, there's, there's certain ways to, to go about it. Um, starting to argue with me is not the, the best way, but uh,
So when I was putting this presentation together, I showed the, that clip to my wife and she's like, what movie is that? I'm like, it's Super Troopers, great movie. All of us troopers love, but uh, um, I, I honestly, I'm not a, a huge ticket guy. I, uh, I don't love giving tickets. I love educating people though. Uh, so I have no problem stopping you, explaining why I stopped you and why you should change your behavior. And I think that's really what it is about, or for most troopers, and there's, especially motorcycle guys, they love giving tickets, but uh, they're, they're, a special, they're a special breed anyway. Um, it's really, it's not about writing a ticket. I don't see any of that money. The Highway Patrol gets $0 from, from citations. Um, it's all about educating the public and changing behavior. Our goal really is voluntary compliance. We want you to, to drive safely because that's what you should be doing to, to begin with. And so if it means me pulling you over and saying, hey, you need to knock that off, you're gonna get yourself hurt or you're gonna get somebody else hurt. That's, that's really what it's, what it's about. So um, I'll get asked this question a lot when I'm presenting in, in drivers of classes, well, what, should they, what should the kids do? First thing is stay calm. Um, nobody, wants to, to see, you know, you freak out and get all crazy, just stay calm and uh, take a deep breath. It, we're gonna get through this together. Um, a lot of times I'll get behind a car, I'll turn my lights on and they'll immediately like swerve to the right. I'm like, whoa, you know, you just went across four lanes there. Glad we made it safely, but uh, let's first off, not get pulled over next time. Um, but if you do happen to it, let's gradually move to the right. Uh, second, safely move to the right and come to a, a stop. Um, that's the other thing that will happen. You know, we'll get behind the car. They'll, as soon as they get to the shoulder, they'll just dynamite their brakes and hopefully we're paying attention and, and we can slow down appropriately as well. Um, again, stay calm. Um, it might be a, a reoccurring theme. Uh, I hate getting up to the, the car and they're already, you know, basket case. I'm like, you don't even know why I pulled you over yet. Um, Roll your windows down, especially if, if they're, they're tinted. Uh, it's easy for us to, to be able to see. And a lot of people um, will ask, or I'll get the, oh, did you pull me over because I'm whatever? No, I couldn't even see in your car, let alone to know who you are before I pulled you over. Um, roll your windows down so we can see, and especially if they're, if they're tinted windows. Uh, we, wanna, we wanna see what's going on inside the car. Stay calm. Wait for, for us to, to approach you, stay calm, and then uh, and follow our, our, our instructions. Uh, some people have their, their license, their registration all ready to go. I honestly, I don't care if you have it ready or if you wait till I get up there, um, but it's mainly about me seeing what, uh, what you're doing. And finally, calmly stay, stay calm, don't argue, save that, that for court. Um, I've had plenty of, of teens as I come back to give them their ticket, like my mom wants to talk to you. I'm like, okay, well, I'm not really gonna talk to your mom on the side of the road. You can explain why you got a ticket when you get home. Um, but again, that's not the, the venue for, for that kind of, kind of behavior. Um, and so a lot of times people will say, you know, how do I get out of a ticket? It's harder to get out of a ticket than it is to get into a ticket. Um, like I, I said earlier, I'm not a, a huge ticket guy, but you start arguing and I guarantee you're gonna get a ticket. Uh, it's just the, the nature of the beast. Um, so yeah, stay calm and, and don't argue. At the conclusion, take another deep breath, gather yourself together, put your seatbelt on. If you took it off, turn the signal on and then get back into traffic safely. Uh, that's, that's really what we, we want the kids to, to know. It's gonna be okay. It's just a ticket. It is not the end of the world. Um, we'll, we'll get through this together. So one uh, other thing we're, we're working on with Zero Fatalities is a, a winter driving presentation uh, to add into your class, which I'm sure you're all going, great, another thing to do. Um, but we, I don't know if you guys are aware, uh, Utah has seen an, a large influx of people moving in from out of state, um, generally from the south and west region of the country where they may not see, see as much snow. Um, so I actually looked up stats and California is the number one uh, move in state. It's not just 
just what people want to want to believe, but it's actually that is factual that we are seeing more people from California than any other state moving to Utah. Um, 17 years ago, I was one of them. So sorry. Um, so we, we see a lot of people moving from areas that haven't seen snow before. We also have new drivers that may have grown up here that have never driven in the snow. Driving in the snow is quite an adventure. Um, I, I hate, I hate the snow. I absolutely hate the snow. You know, it might look pretty, but I hate the snow because it causes me a whole lot of work um, when people can't drive straight. So we partnered with, with Zero Fatalities to, to develop this presentation that's hopefully going to give these kids an idea of how to drive in the snow. Um, it's not going to do any behind the wheel, but it's going to give them information about how to, how to do things. Uh, it should be live sometime uh, next month. And it's going to be very similar to the Truck Smart lesson, where there'll be a, a quiz and some other online uh, resources as well. So I'll give you a sneak preview of a couple of the things that we're working with. Here in Utah, you need to be able to drive during all four seasons of the year. And when you're driving in the winter, you'll be faced with some unique conditions. But if you're prepared, you'll be able to stay safe when you're behind the wheel. First up, you need to make sure your car is ready before you go. Breaking down is bad in good weather and can be dangerous in bad weather. Check your vehicle's tires to make sure they're in good condition with plenty of tread and proper tire pressure. If your car tires are worn down or aren't properly inflated, it can affect your ability to maneuver properly and can increase the likelihood of a crash, especially on slick, snow-covered roads. Make sure your gas tank is full. If you get stuck in traffic or snow, you might need more fuel than you anticipated. Check your windshield wipers and make sure your wiper fluid is full and leaves the freezing temperature. And here's a good tip. If you're using your windshield wiper, turn on your headlights too. It'll help others see you in poor weather. Wear warm clothes. If something goes wrong and you get stuck, you don't want to be wearing short school flip-flops. Keep the following items in your car. You might need any one of these when driving in the winter. Flashlight and extra batteries, throw straps and tire chains, ice scraper, jumper cables, snow shovel, blanket, water and non-perishable food, first aid kit, matches and candles, extra clothes including your gloves. Before leaving home, check the driving conditions for the upcoming forecast. Safe drivers will be aware of your conditions and their driving safety rules. You can get updates from your Yacht Traffic app, Yacht Twitter feed, Yacht Traffic cameras, or your local news. If you see temperatures will be near or below freezing, be prepared for ice on the road. Clear all snow, ice, and frost from the windows, headlights, brake lights, and signals so you can see clearly and others can see you too. Give yourself plenty of time to clear out your vehicle and be prepared for slow moving traffic so you don't put yourself at risk of crashing. Snow left on top of your car can become hazardous during your drive. It may become dislodged and cover your windows or lights. It may also harden and fly off your vehicle, causing damage around you. When you're driving in poor weather conditions, remember that you need to take it slow for ice and snow. The main cause of crashes in the winter is people driving too fast for weather conditions, so slow down. During the storm, stay attentive and reduce your speed. It is your responsibility to maintain control of your vehicle and be aware of what's happening around you. Eliminate all distractions so you can focus on arriving safely. Watch for wildlife, as animals can be more active after a storm. Also, do not use cruise control during a storm. When the road surfaces and conditions are constantly changing, you need to be in full control. Be aware of black ice and cold temperatures. Roads that seem dry may be slippery and dangerous. Take it slow when approaching intersections, off ramps, bridges, or shady areas. These are common places to find black ice. Drive under the speed limit if it's wet, snowy, or icy. The posted speed limit is only for dry, ideal conditions. Accelerate slowly. Brake gently and don't turn too quickly. Poor driving conditions can cause a crash if these rules aren't followed. 
And remember, all your breath and all your breath can help you maintain traction and get you through heavier patches of snow, but neither will help you if you get to a dangerous spot or skid. Forward breath does mean forward stop. When it's wet, snowy, or icy, you need extra room to stop, so increase your falling distance. Snow and slush can form ridges between lanes that can be slippery and cause you to lose control. Avoid these ridges when it's possible. You should always wear a seatbelt. A crash risk increases in bad weather, so buck up every time. If you find yourself behind a snow plow, stay behind it. The road behind an active snow plow is safer to drive on. Don't assume snow plow drivers can see you. Stay at least eight car lengths behind the plow and watch for snow discharging debris. If you're in front of a snow plow, don't stop suddenly. So we're also partnering with icroadsafety.com. We're using uh, one of their, their videos uh, in the presentation. Um, that one we've, we've re received written permission uh, to use uh, as uh, part of this program. Um, there is a fee associated with it to use it in the, the classroom. Um, sorry. Went too far. There we go. So we're going to also talk about how to correct on the slide, which is huge. And that's where we're going to use the icy road safety uh, information. What to do after a crash. Uh, moving over. And then finally, um, going through everything that we we learned and like i said there's going to be a quiz uh, for the kids as well and hopefully an activity that they have to do with mom and dad to again get that information into in to their their hands as well um it'll be available next month uh the quiz and then again we've received uh, permission from icroadsafety.com to use one of their videos in the presentation so what else do do we offer as as high patrol and, and dps um we have an adopt a high school program. So we try to get troopers uh, throughout the state to get into the high schools. We want to get into every single high school in the state every single year uh, to get in front of these kids. Sometimes that's, that's hard. Uh, some schools aren't as uh, um, desirous to get us involved, but uh, we also try to pick select schools and do up to six to eight schools a year where we have heavily, heavy involvement uh, doing lunchtime activities, coming to, uh, games, doing halftime uh, activities, uh, doing a seatbelt survey at the beginning of the year and at the end of the, the school year to see hopefully improvement uh, throughout the year of students wearing seatbelts. Uh, I have two seatbelt convincers that I, I can pull throughout the state um, that uh, simulates a five mile hour crash. Uh, I was at an elementary school last week with it. The kids love it. It's great. I think it's uncomfortable, but uh, uh, we have those resources as well. Um, we have driver's ed uh, presentations that we, again, love to, to get in front of the, the kids uh, and show them the why uh, they want to be driving safely. Uh, we have pedal carts and distracted driving and uh, drunk driving goggles that I'm sure you guys are, are familiar with. Uh, and then we also have um, our parade cars that aren't necessarily for driver's ed, but we, we do have those that uh, we love to bring out into the communities as well. Um, yes. Uh, email me. Um, so this is my contact informa information. You can call me or email me uh, and I can uh, direct you to that. If not, uh, you could just look up the high patrol office for whatever uh, county uh, you're in. Um, where, where are you located? Okay. Um, yeah, email me. Uh, I can definitely get a hold of, of the trooper down there or I can come and take care of it myself. Um, but yeah, we uh, love to, to get into the schools and get in front of these, these kids, um, give you guys a, a classroom a day break where we can just take care of the, the lesson for you. But, uh, but really just getting that interaction with, with them, seeing us in uniform, hopefully having that, that positive law enforcement uh, interaction with them as well. Any further questions or anything that uh, you as instructors want to see from, from us? 
Okay, uh, if you do have, uh, have any further questions, I'll be here all day. But uh, I appreciate your time today uh, and, and good luck going back to school. <laughs>